What is good, Elevated Family? Welcome back to another message I have to deliver to you today. Um, if you didn't know if this is your first time here, my I go by the name of Elevated Love here on YouTube. And um, today, the message, well, this message, this first message is today is um, me and my testimony. So I delivered it before. The Lord gave me some insight um, in spiritual. I had to grow spiritually um, in my maturity spiritually just to be able to deliver it, you know, in a more proper aspect that my words would be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. So with all that being said, is this is going to be somewhat of a long one. I tried to record it on Saturday. I did. Ended up deleting it somehow or half of it. So um let me get right into it this is yeah testimony so it's it's if you got a time if you got a minute whenever you come across this i pray that it's edification to your life to your journey um and and knowing that nothing is too hard for god and everything is worth it when it comes to god i had a dream on October 17th, where I took a nap during the day and a tooth fell out. Um, one of my incisors in the dream. So it was loose. I pushed it out with my tongue and it fell out. I woke up after that very short dream. But then I woke up, I dismissed the dream. Now I've had about three or four dreams over the last six months, maybe about, you know, teeth falling out. It wasn't like teeth growing in. It was just, you know, like teeth falling out. I dismissed all of those, all of those dreams and this dream that day, the Lord wanted me to, you know, really understand what was going on. So, uh, I dismissed the dream. I got on social media and the first thing that I saw, like one of the first thumbnails for a video, I saw an influencer who does, um, clean comedy. Um, she had just made a video and the thumbnail was, a the video was of a, like, I think a couple of shots of different smiles with a tooth missing. And the joke was there's a side tooth. Everybody, why are so many people with side teeth missing? Which let me know, like, this was God. <laughs> this is like, you can't put God in the box and how it's going to work. Um, so I had that dream and literally, like I say, this was less than an hour. Like, I'm going to say less than 30 minutes if I'm not mistaken. So it wasn't more than an hour when it came across my timeline. It was the first thing I saw, but now I want to, I watched that video, got a laugh, but I watched, watched another video to gain some um, faith-based spiritual insight about what this meant. And she, uh, the person on this platform was able to uh, give me some insight that I was being attacked to not speak spiritually or that I would not speak spiritually. And I understand my power in God and who I follow. <laughs> so I'm just like, that's not it. And I tell you, I kid you not. Saturday, when I was trying to record this video, when I say everything and everybody was coming for my time that day, can you help with this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? Nine times, 99% of the time I can like, I don't have no problems with trying to get stuff done what I'm trying to do. But that day, no, it was coming for me. So I had already made some key points that I wanted to talk about in my testimony or I was making a rebuke. And then the Lord let me know, like, you don't need to talk about that. You know, I judge those of the world. And I do have a little bit of a word for those who consider themselves a part of the body in this testimony. But it's still not that deep. Like, God, God going to judge both. But there are biblical words to let you know and there's a whole separate word that I'm going to release about being able to have, you know, to edify your spiritual discernment. Um, because it's sad the way some people consider themselves a part of the body, but they're doing the devil's work, um, killing, stealing, attempting to kill, steal and destroy. Cause you can't kill and still destroy what God got. Not for me anyway. Um, that ain't my portion. So, Understanding that I've had a couple of dreams or I've had those dreams of teeth being falling out. I'm like, okay, so I've been spiritually attacked or some people have been attacking me and I wasn't really aware for the past couple of months um, because it's all been happening behind my back. And that's one of the things that the spirit of Jezebel or Jezebel did in the Bible was going behind the back of the man that did not want to sell his inherited land to 
her husband, King Ahab. So we all know how Jezebel's end came. So if you are in the word, if you're not get in the word, you'll realize, um, I'll bring it up again. I may have brought it up, but yeah, basically Jezebel didn't want to listen to a man of God and she, she died. She was her own God in her own mind. She died. She was trying to kill prophets. She died. Okay. So that was um, the dream on the 17th. So just aware of not wanting me to speak. So I, again, I made these key points that I wanted to speak about on Friday, sept, um, October the 21st. I prayed about what I wanted. You know, Lord, I wanted these words to be what you want me to speak. Um, and the Lord gave me a confirmation through the verse of the day on October 22nd at the, the verse of the day renews on my phone um, at midnight. So I saw that and I believe. So the other confirmation was the dream that I had on Saturday, September, um, September. Let me get out of September. It's October, October 22nd. So I went to sleep after I, uh, I saw that verse of the day, went to sleep. Had a dream, um, familiar people that are like family, that are family in waking life. Um, we would sleep in the living room. We woke up in the morning and we started to get our areas together, like blankets and stuff like that, to, you know, just get the day started. Um, their father got up and walked away from us out of the room. And that was the last time he was in the shot the, uh, or in the dream. The sisters got up, everybody got up, and we started to make our way towards the dining room um, kitchen area. So the living room is open to the dining room. To the right of the dining room is a high top counter, um, uh, what is it, bar counter. And to the left of the dining room, it's not a big dining room. Um, there's a dining table and then to the left is a patio sliding window door, a door, sliding door with no curtains, no blinds. So you can see right outside into like outside. So the lights coming through, through coming through during the day, there's a bag of seeds on the floor that um, one of the sisters gets up and take grabs and she eats some of the seeds out of the bag. And as she um, eats out of the bag, I believe she passed the bag to me. And I guess my understanding was I was supposed to eat out of this bag too. So um, I grabbed the bag, but immediately after I moved or like a jerk, as I'm standing at the kitchen counter, at the counter, but I'm standing on the side of the counter from the dining room area, um, their mother is standing in the kitchen, but on the other side of the counter. And the bag rips open and seeds fall out of the bag. As I look down and see that the seeds are falling out of the bag, um, I see that there's glass on the floor. So there was glass inside the bag of seeds. So immediately, like when I say less than, as that happened, I saw the glass, I hear a vacuum cleaner. So I turn to the right. The sister of the one who handed me the bag is already vacuuming the bag with the seeds up. Like, oh, um, don't worry about it. I'll clean it up is basically what she said. And she was just really like, oh, really nice about it. I, I, but I was like, you got the vacuum cleaner way too fast. Like you, that was really weird. So I look at her with the vacuum cleaner. She says that I look back down at the seeds in the glass, but I haven't moved, but I don't have on shoes. So I haven't stepped on anything. Um, I look at their mother and she's looking at me and she looks down. She was like, oh yeah, there was glass in there. But the way she said it was like, basically let me know that everybody else knew what, what what else was in that bag but it was my turn the bag was passed to me to eat out of it and of course had i had eaten out of this bag would have glass would have done to my mouth and my body of course so again that was the dream the lord gave me on september october uh, 22nd and he woke me up at 5 55 a.m on the dot <laughs> so just, you know, the, the power of grace to be able to deliver that message at 5.55 a.m. So I know I'm 10 minutes in, but that was the backdrop of a lot of what's been going on um, to unbeknownst to me to a certain extent. And that was something in the spiritual, but I wasn't coming into agreement with that. And the Lord was revealing to me, like, people don't want me to speak.
like I said, I tried to record that video. There was some hindrance, some roadblocks. So now I'm re-recording it now. And it's going to be uploaded today to you. Made available, yeah, to bless somebody else. Because this is just where God has brought me from. Ain't none of this my portion. So, um, yeah, I ain't tripping about none of that. So before I get completely into my testimony, we're going to start with Saul turning into Paul. Um, if you don't know, Paul is a disciple, apostle, teacher, um, who wrote a good portion of the Bible. Um, he wrote a good portion of the Bible. He used to be Saul, the name by go by the name of Saul of Taurus, because he grew up in a family of Pharisees. And because he grew up in a family of Pharisees, he had no problem persecuting, um, sending people who um, followed the teachings of Jesus Christ to prison, killing men, women, and possibly some children. He had no problem doing this because that's the family that he grew up in. They were Pharisees. Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the spirit, but they did not believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was sent by God himself in the, uh, to the flesh. So he received, um, Paul was actually, Saul was actually present when there was a disciple named Stephen who was stoned to death because he was um, accused of something that he, I don't think he did. And then there were people that were adding on to it and lying to what they said he did. And they stoned him to death. So Saul was actually there when that happened. He received a he received permission from a high priest because the high priest was also a Pharisee. They were pretentious people that believed they understood and knew the law better than anyone else. And, um, they really, despite believing in the spiritual resurrection, they were not living this of the spirit. Um, and that's what Christ was there for, to show them the way. Um, so to truly show them the way, the truth and the light, because that's who he was and is. So he received permission to go persecute some more Christians um, on his road to Damascus. And in the process of this, he was... Um, he had an encounter by God. He went blind, heard a voice behind him, flash of light. He went blind and had to go to another, was directed to go to a city where a man named Ananias, wait a minute, Ananias would um, restore his sight. And from that point on, he was um, known as Paul, a true disciple of God because of his encounter that he had. A true disciple of Jesus Christ because of the encounter he had by God. Um, by the will of God, by the grace of God. So the other thing that I want to talk about is there was a, also a man, and I believe in the book of Matthews that was born. And if you want to read about Paul, that was in the book of, I believe, chapters Acts, the, the book of Acts chapter eight and nine. And if you want to hear a little bit more about that story of Saul going to Paul, um, Jesus healed a man that was born blind in the book of Matthews, if I'm not mistaken. And his disciples, the disciples were with him. But after healing the man, the disciples, their question to Jesus was, what did the man do to be born blind? Because um, surely he had done something. And Jesus let him know, let them know, like there was nothing that he did. This was just the glory of God that was planned to be made known in this man's life. Hmm. Plan to be made known in his life and for the glory of God to be shown to the world. And there were people who knew the man to be blind that did not believe that he was either actually born blind anymore because he had his sight again. So um, things happen in life that either you get the opportunity to try to curse God because you don't like the op how the outcome is. Or it's 828, Romans 828 moment where it's destined that you are supposed to overcome these things that are brought upon you in the world to show the glory of God, the power of God in your life. And that's where we're going to jump right into my testimony. All right. Um, and so I made a video. On, um, I released a video uh, talking about a prophetic teaching of Romans 12 and 2 and a couple of other things, Halloween. So if you want to go check that out, you can. It's about an hour and a half long. But in the video, I speak of my dyslexia. It's not something that's always there or constant, but it is real. Um, and because I was, I noticed, I caught that I was doing, I was, I remembered a 
the verse backwards or I remembered the numbers to the verse of a, a, in the Holy Bible backwards. I fixed it during the video, but I spoke briefly about my dyslexia. And in the process of me editing that in the video, it made me look into the actual definition of dyslexia. So in the process of doing that, um, it's not necessarily that you, dyslexia is not necessarily um, seeing things backwards, but I comprehend numbers and like when I when I recite or give things when they come out from my from my mind through my mouth sometimes um, or just in my mind they'll be in reverse. So instead of Jeremiah seventeen and ten, I was saying Jeremiah ten and seventeen, and but I had the verse correct, the words to the verse correct, just not the actual number. So if you would have looked those numbers up, you would have been like, that's not Jeremiah seventeen and ten. Um, that's something else. So, um, I spelled dyslexia with an I instead of a Y and that made me go into this hole. So as I'm doing that, I come across what actually, what are some causes of dyslexia? And I believe it may possibly, possibly be hereditary for me somewhat, but I'm not 100% sure. But one of the things that is a, a cause of dyslexia is head trauma. And this is where, yeah, basically jumping into my testimony. So um, I made notes to try to keep this from being too long, an hour and a half. But, you know, um, I have a flat part of my head. I've had it since I was a child. If I can or I plan to, I can edit a, a, a video, a photo of me from pre-K before kindergarten when I was in school where I can show you now really briefly. I didn't feel like trying to mess with my head today or brush it, but it's not just that spot, but there's an actual flat, like it's flat right there. It's part of my head is flat. Um, and hair used to grow a lot thinner there, but it, as of August of last year, it's been growing thicker and thicker. Like this is way more hair than it used to be up there in that circular spot. And I was told that it was a ringworm, but if it was a ringworm, um, basically, it would have just killed the hair follicles in, uh, in that spot as opposed to making my head flat um, in that area. So I don't know why or how it actually happened. Um, um, the cause of it, I have I don't hold any alt in my heart against anybody. Nobody actually gave me an answer about it. I was teased at some point by some siblings. Like, you know, that's why you got dropped on your head. I don't know. I genuinely don't know, but... We're going to move on from that. That's just a part of my testimony that is not my portion. Like, it's not my portion. It's my portion that I've moved past, but it's not holding me back. So um, that was before pre-K. So I had to be young before kindergarten. I don't remember when it happened. By kindergarten, from kindergarten to first grade, I was molested by uh, someone that was to watch over us, an older uh, female. And... Yeah, that happened from kindergarten to first grade. Um, obviously, still the child, so that was just precursors to things that were to affect my life in a way that I didn't expect it to. So, um, from about the age of six and seven to about 12 years old, 11 or 12, um, there was a lot of this fighting with um, a bigger older sibling from about that time. So a lot of those fights, a good majority of them, I'm gonna say all of them because I wasn't purposely starting these things, um, was just, yeah, this fights. Um, and it wasn't like like completely like getting lumped up and stuff like that, but they were not play fights at all. <laughs> so, um, one second. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. If you hear some background noise, um, it is what it is. Y'all gonna get this testimony today. Um, it's always something. Um, it's always something, especially when it came to trying to deliver this. So, if I'm I'm probably speaking loud enough that it's not a, a factor. Um, so yeah, fighting from about uh, fighting older older sibling, and that happened, and then seeing. By the time I was in second or third grade, despite, you know, these things that had happened already in my life, the fighting, the, um, 
the molestation. I saw portions of a porn video for the first time and this was me getting out of school and porn was on the TV on my way to, I believe my room or going to do something. And it, the shots of it that I saw, because again, I'm a child, I don't have any understanding of what sex is. It was just like direct intercourse. And then there was the back, the scene was backed out of to just seeing bodies and then direct intercourse again. And I was completely confused about what was going on <laughs> in that like in that video so just being exposed to stuff and things like that that just i didn't have any true clarity understanding of um from about mostly from about 13 to the time i graduated high school i was in and in church on and off mostly on um i say on and off because i went to like a different youth church at like 13 to mm, 13, 14, 12, 13, 14. And then by 15 to graduation, I believe I was at the same church um, when I was going. Like when I went, I wasn't with, I wasn't there every single Sunday. I can say that. But I was a part of the youth group in the church, a youth leader. I was a youth leader in the group. Um, so, yeah, I was there for the most part. Um, let's see. Okay, so all of this is significant because as um, we come to understand that our flesh is sin, it's the, the things of the flesh, the flesh desires is a, of a sinful nature. So the flesh has already been manipulated and experienced things that I didn't have any clarity or understanding of as a child. So, um, as I talked about in that, again, the video about Romans 12 and 2, um, the teaching on Romans 12 and 2, uh, be ye not conformed to the world, but, the, uh, be, but, be the, but transform your mind by the renewing, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> so, so, um, and then Jeremiah, tw uh, 17 and 10. No, no, no. Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart for the issues of the world flow from it. Um, my heart had not changed based on all these things that had happened at this point because I was knitted in my mother's womb by God. So I feel like there were certain characteristics that, characteristics that God placed on my heart that it didn't allow me not to be who he made me to be as I was maturing. Um, there was things in my, I would say in my mind, as far as Jeremiah 17 and 10, where it says that God judges the heart and the mind of man or the motivations of man to give each according to uh, what they're doing. So because all of this has happened, there are things that have been compartmentalized um, in my mind that are not necessarily playing out, but um, I'm still able to kind of just be me throughout this whole process and be a great, you know, a great friend, a great confidant, a shoulder, a constant shoulder to lean on from so many different people and give a lot of advice, a lot of relationship advice, despite me not being in a lot of relationships throughout my teens and even in my young, like in my twenties, like, that's not something I, I didn't have a strong attachment to be in relationships at any point of my life. Not that I had a problem with relationships, not that I couldn't be in a relationship or I didn't understand. It was kind of feeling like being tied down and people, it felt like people wanted to be in love at a very young age or like when they first met me or like know me for a short period of time. It's like, I think I love you. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't really think that's, yeah, that's not it. So that was, yeah, that kept me away from love and being in relationships too often, so, um, or much at all. When people thought that was something wrong, like, why aren't you in a relationship? Nobody, I guess, at a younger age, I made it through most of high school, nobody, like, a relationship lasted, but if it, if I didn't feel like it was reciprocated or, like, it, the first relationship wasn't, didn't really feel too reciprocated or, like, it was something off, so that didn't really last. 
and then I was supposedly cheating at some point because of like just the life I was living. Um, I wasn't cheating, but it was portrayed that I was, or it would have really appeared that I was cheating because of what had happened. Um, basically, the, there was a police raid that was about to happen in where we were, the house that we were at, and they were like, y'all have to come with us and leave. And I'm like, I'm just over here with people like with my family. I didn't, I didn't know everybody at the house that I was at, but they, we were close enough that they were like, yeah, we just, everybody just going to go out of, over here to this other, like other spot in the, another state. <laughs> and, um, that was across the uh, state lines. And I was just introduced to somebody else and I'm like, nothing happened. And because nothing happened, they thought something was wrong with me, but it was, I'm like, I don't really, I don't like you enough. I wasn't in my flesh. I didn't constantly live in my flesh, even as a teenager. Um, and that did make me better, but at some point I did feel like that was like a badge, but it was constantly not enough or I wasn't strong enough because first Timothy, second Timothy one and seven says, for we are not given a spirit of fear, but of sound mind of, we're not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. Um, and my spirit of fear wasn't really. I wouldn't, I felt like my spirit of fear wasn't an issue because I'm like, what I saw as being bold was my willingness to fight, growing up fighting. So if if I got a problem, if it's going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem. But it takes much more strength to not engage in somebody that's clearly lost in the world or thinking that physical strength and the things of this world, carnal things are true power or what, what it means to be courageous. And it's not. Um... For everything in this world will pass away. Now, um, as far as power goes, I still feel like I was living in a certain part of my power, but I, a lot of that was diminished from me um, because of what I went through growing up. And then what was uh, love, my heart didn't change. Like I said, I was a shoulder for so many different people growing up. And like I said, giving a lot of relationship advice, even at one time, like people that were married and I'm like, I learned to just stay out of married people business because they're going to be together. And depending on how they play out, they're going to look at you like the bad guy. And I'm like, I wasn't, I never, I never was offering my, my advice. Like, come here, let me tell you what's right. I clearly am not married. I'm clearly not the one that's constantly in a relationship. Y'all come to me. I don't, I, I don't have a problem with it because I try to give my genuine, unbiased opinion. But yeah, I just learned. I ain't, don't come ask me nothing. Yeah, go to God first <laughs> about something when you're in a marriage. Because especially, uh, just I just learned to, I didn't have a lot of advice for, advice for people that was married after that because, yeah, eventually they didn't even stay married, but it was like, I was just, I knew things that was going on and I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm not the person that don't come, yeah, if you're doing stuff on the side, don't because it's going to make me not want to, I don't want to be around that. I don't want to be involved. Yeah, I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> Especially when you're seeing how much you love somebody, but you're doing this. I don't, I'm you, from my understanding of what love is, like, yeah, this is a commitment under God. So, like, yeah, I don't, yeah, this ain't about nobody else. This is testimony about me. So, let me pull back from that. Um, yeah, I'm just, um, love, my love was still there. I feel like I lost some power, the spirit of understanding these principles, uh, biblical principles that were my portion from birth. But the whole thing about Romans 12 and 2 is overcoming the world. That's what God did in the revel uh, in the churches of Revelation. When it speaks of the churches of Revelation, the seven churches in Revelation, um, chapters 2 and 3, Jesus is basically telling us, um, is prophesying that the Lord... The sun is going to come and overcome the world. And it says in, I believe, Revelations 3, like 12 through 22 or 12, 20, somewhere in there, somewhere in those verses that um, 
he who overcomes the world, if you let him in, he will dine with you and you will be able to sit on the throne with the father as with him on the throne with the, as he did as his father's throne. And I'm like, overcome the world. The world had the thing that there was, there wasn't a lot of guard to my heart and mind to how the world was going to affect me. Now, do I hold a charge to those around me who didn't see this or expect the world to, the things of the world to affect me in a certain way? No, it wasn't their job to heal me. They didn't have the power to heal me anyway. We would, none of us knew was rooted in the word of God. We was either teens, young adults, in dark, emotionally available, but because uh, again, that wasn't nobody else's portion to heal me. Nobody else had the power to understand me, the knowledge. The power of God was going to do this. The glory of God was going to be shown through this whole process. So it might have took longer than what I expected or what the, those around me would have thought. But the only way to really help or, I mean, it, to have the heart to do it, you would have still been there trying to help. If you thought there was an issue, you would have helped. But there was nobody trying to do that. So I felt like that was disheartening when I started to experience things in my life that didn't align for me in my heart with the way I felt. So, um, especially after just being a shoulder and being em like emotionally there for so many people around me, so that I felt like that was just thrown to the dirt, like that meant nothing. Um, but because I was able to perform well at school, like because my brain appeared to be so well put together, like I can, I can, because you can make decent grades and perform this and perform that and do this, you must be okay. And you, you're okay enough for me to constantly be, um, if anything, I feel like people can say that, yeah, it's rare that I was going to too many other people to talk about issues and not that I wouldn't have, but if you, I guess, I was more, yeah, if there was anything, somebody might have helped me with something physically, financially, and that was kind of a, a that was a, a generational thing, too, to where how, yeah, being out here acting like liquid gold <laughs> with, with, with no cup or a cup with holes in it, like constantly, like that's how my mind was working. That's how there was no, yeah, all in the past. So I'm, yeah. This ain't nothing to harp over to, to to hold in my heart. So, um, yeah, I just didn't didn't have a lot of uh, regular relationships. Didn't have a desire to be in a reg regular relationships half the time, or just lusting after people because there are plenty of attractive people in the world. But it was just like, how do you begin to have a normal life if you constantly are just like, ooh. Ooh, ooh, Some, ain't that the plan? One day is to find somebody that's just for you. And this is me before I even came to the true knowledge of God. It's like finding somebody for you. How are you actually going to be comfortable in that relationship if you constantly just thinking like, ooh, that's so nice. If you're lusting in the flesh and you learn in the word that the flesh goes against the spirit and those who worship God will worship him in spirit and truth. Those are the only people that can truly worship God. Those who worship in spirit and truth. You can do all the lip service. You can do all the traditions and physical things. But if you're not having faith, you have to have faith. You have to have faith. And faith is a substance of things seen, but not uh, not seen, but hoped for. I, that's like paraphrasing Hebrews 11 and 1. But you have to have faith. And yeah, everything that I went through just... It, it, there was no, there was no biblical inheritance understanding of the word. And when I was in church, it just a lot of it was um, feeling like it was coming from a lot of Old Testament teachings and no real understanding or sound foundation of what the new covenant is and how to live in it. So I wasn't. The world was celebrating different lifestyles and things of, and living in the flesh. And plus, what I had went through, um, I was the world that came into my mind. And things that were compartmentalized, but the world hadn't truly took over my heart. And I was still able to perform well in school and be a solid friend. And I feel like to anybody that came into my life. Um, but um, 
Let's see. I didn't know that 2 Timothy 1 and 7 had really been affected in my life. So the spirit of fear, like I said, I was willing to, like, if it was about just like, you about throwing hands and it is just whatever. That's how I felt. But that's not where we, that's not where we at with God. That's not the true spirit of being, having courage. That's not truly that. Um, that's not a spirit of, I felt like a lot, my power was going, a certain level of my power was going. I was always ready to see the beauty in everybody else around me. So that allowed me to pull people in or allow people in that were in competition with me that I thought we were friends the whole time until we weren't cool. And then it, everything that made us A ones to day ones and forever, like, you know, for life, it was, it meant nothing like, like that. Like immediately I'm like, dang, light switch. That kind of, that was disheartening. Uh, yeah, that made me feel some kind of way for sure. Um, of love, but that, that love, the love, the heart that God gave me didn't change. So during the pandemic, I was able to have a conversation with my mom about, you know, my childhood and she just, just growing up and she let me know that I was the only child that was, she said, I just didn't naturally have issues with anybody else. And compared to my other siblings, which we're all born different. So this ain't no comparison game, but she just let me know something that just kind of solidified how I naturally already felt in life in general, where I didn't have a lot of issues with other people around me. But when I did, it was like that fear, but not that fear, that rage that I would find when I had to fight an older, older sibling or when I had to ignore. So I didn't, I didn't really get bullied, but it's like when I felt like I truly had a reason to have an issue with somebody like it's it, it, logic is out the window. And the last time I thought that I was just like, you know what, what people call demon time and all of that, because I ain't never seek to just take somebody out of this world. I know the the heart that I had never wanted me to go hurt the person that hurt me as a child or distorted my mind on. Um, I, in my mind, even growing up, I just I kind of always felt like somebody must have did that to them, and it just it I didn't like the experience, but that's the way I looked at it. Um, at a young age, growing up with like my dad going to prison for selling drugs, and me not knowing him at a young age, I, there was one point in before he was released from prison, my mom my mom was like, you know, do you want me to put him on child support? And I said no. And the reason why I said no was because I felt like when he gets out of prison and when this time comes, he's going to have enough issues trying to actually get on his feet. And I didn't feel like we were struggling or poor. And um, I just didn't see how that would help him become get on his feet by immediately trying to put him in a situation that he probably not even ready for because of where he had because of where he had been. And that's the way I viewed it, even as I had to be in. I was still in grade school at this time. So before fifth grade that I'm having this kind of understanding, like I don't really think that that'll be beneficial to the situation if we really, like I don't really, yeah, I don't see how that would help. So again, my heart, my love was still there as far as Second Timothy 1 and 7, but my sound mind, but because I was able to be so many things to so many other people and not focus on myself, my sound mind appeared to be sound and it, my mind wasn't whole. So I was in the word a little bit, going back to church in my early 20s and that kind of stuck around. And then it was, I heard, a, had a spiritual encounter and I heard the voice of Christ for the first time and they told me to move. Which again, this was a Romans 828 moment in Romans 28, 828 speaks of everything working out for the good of those who love God and are called to his perfect uh, call to his will of to his purpose. And I didn't really want to move. I really didn't. But provisions were made for me to move and I was able to move. So this then I was in that place until the pandemic happened. So again, I had this talk with my mom during the pandemic and all of this whole time. I've never been sick during the whole pandemic. <laughs> um, the way that everybody else has been sick. Um, I'm gonna give that, that's a whole nother like, yeah. 
situation, but I got reasons why I haven't and reasons why I'm not. But that's, yeah. So I made it through most of my life being what was, you know, necessary for others and giving myself, but just not um, understanding I didn't completely have a sound mind before. Uh, and because of, you know, my childhood, my heart and my mind, Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart for the issues of the world, issues of life, consequences of life flow from it. So the Lord called me back to him truly wholeheartedly because of another supernatural occurrence that I just truly couldn't deny. Um, in February, the beginning of February, 2022, and I came across this verse in Romans 7, uh, starting at 15, after the Lord called me back and I had clarity and a desire to, under, after I had a clarity and desire to understand his word more than I had ever had at any point in my life, because it still wasn't seeking in all them other times that I, there was parts I'm just like, yeah, I kind of followed this, but it wasn't, it just didn't, it wasn't rooted in my heart and my mind the way that it is now. And I, I, when I read it, I had an emotional moment because so many answers to my life um, in this world can be found in the gospel in this whole time. How could I be this old and I see the reflection of my life in this? I saw the reflection in my life in these words and that's what kind of like not only just convicted me more, but with what I had already been through and the person that I had been in my life that I never truly thought I could be or ever was broke me enough because well, like tried to break me because or break my mind. And that's the whole purpose of the devil. The darkness of this world is to get you off of the path that God has for you. Um, that's pre that's predestined or that's planned by God. And I was off that path. And God called me back, and I'm so grateful for it. But Romans um, 7, 15, and 25 is about the war within man. And this is what I had came to um, where I found myself in a place or being called um, in a way that I never expected to be called. So let me jump right into that. Um, bear with me. I'm going to read this from the International Children's Version so you get the most the clearest understanding <laughs> of what <clears throat> is being portrayed and revealed in this word. The war within man. Um, I do not understand the things I do. I do not do the thing the good things I want to do. And I do the bad things I hate to do. And if I do not want to do the bad things I do, then that means that I agree that the law is good, the spiritual law. But I am not really the one who is doing these things, these bad things. It is sin living in me that does these things. Yes, I know that nothing good lives in me. I mean, nothing good lives in the part of me that is earthly and sinful. Our, set, our flesh is sinful. It's naturally sinful. The flesh is at war at, at, with the spirit. That's just me speaking right there. Um, I want to do the things that are good, but I do not do them. I do not do the good things that I want to do. I do the bad things that I do not want to do. So if I do things I do not want to do, then I am not the one doing those things. It is the sin living in me that does those bad things. And this is when I saw what I felt like my life being reflected in the words. And I say that because there were points in my life where it felt like my mind was completely void. And when I say void, I guess some people can't understand it. And that's why, again, I was a true this is something even when i was in the world that i used to try to relate to people like quit comparing yourself to other people because whoever you're comparing yourself to is not you 
when you want someone to behave like usually in relationships with partners, it was just like, you worried about how this person is not reacting the way that you want them to react to this and that, but they're not you. What you went through is basically in who raised you and what you took in from the world is what's forming your way of thinking that this is what it is. But if they didn't go through what you went through, they didn't have any of those key people or experiences they're not going to think the same if they don't have the brain that god gave like y'all god gave y'all two different brains lives and experience you may not understand it and i get it you may not understand it but that's why for me it was a per point where it was just an emotional because despite however well i could perform in the everyday life and be me and show up for people in ways that I wasn't showing up for myself mentally and emotionally um, and things that I had compartmentalized from my childhood and things that I had been through. Um, I There was times where my mind was completely void. And when I say void, like there was no thoughts. No thoughts led to me being someone that I never thought I could be or was truly a part of me. And because of this, God understood, and I think this is why I, I come to this point where the hypocrisy of those who live in the body or consider themselves a part of the body of Christ who are going behind my back, as I was going to talk about a little rebuke earlier, um, the hypocrisy that is found in them and that you will find when you come to Christ, you have to pick up your cross. Like nobody said this is going to be easy, but walking with God is worth it. Walking with God is worth it. Um, being someone that I never thought I would be because I didn't understand why my mind didn't have thoughts and why I was reacting in ways that I didn't feel I genuinely wanted to react or even aware of how I was reacting, but it was happening. So understanding now that this is how much things that the flesh will feel is why it's, it's a, the we live in a society that's trying to train you into being in your flesh and enjoying the things of the flesh from this early of an age as possible. Some things that I had no understanding about that I didn't even particularly act out in a way in my childhood, even through adolescent ages and teenage and where I wasn't constantly like, I want to be in a relationship. I constantly want sex. Not that I wouldn't be aroused and stuff like that and be human. I have flesh. It just wasn't the same way that I felt like most of my peers, it was with most of my peers at the same time. So when they were going through phases of like being like premarital sex and sexually promiscuous and things that we consider just like the regular teenage phase or whatever, I wasn't really into all of it. I could play the role, but Dancing wasn't really lustful for me. Like it was just something that it was what it was. Um, music never was true, unless the lyrics were just pure lust, but things that the world was trying to make lustful and sinful and just of the flesh for me in my mind, that's not where they sat. And that's not where they have to be for anybody. But if that is where you have, that's your weak point. You do want to find yourself strengthening the Lord away from that um, before just saying that you can do it because it will, you'll get dragged in a way that you don't want to get dragged. Um, so I say hypocritical of those in the body because it's essentially, especially if you're going behind my back and saying things that you don't know about me, you're doing the devil's work, but saying that you're a part of the body of Christ. Um, Saul was Paul. I don't know who's been saying what about me since I've come to Christ. Um, but it's most definitely a lie from the pit of hell because I spent so much time. I couldn't know the word that I waited. I know it experienced some of the spiritual like warfare and learn how to pray through all of that. Um, the way God was training me through the spirit to do and through um, people that he led me to. I couldn't have did all that had I just been out in the world. Um, things that he's delivered me from. So because of the way everything that happened, I've had relations with males and females, um, not being on relationships, but not, in, I was, I'm capable of being in a relationship. I just, the idea of being truly tied down, even when I was like, I remember the first long distance relationship that I had, i just felt like, dang, do I have to do I have to walk around with a, a video, a body camera, like wake up every single day with a body camera just to be like, hey, I'm not cheating. So just insecure people, 
insecure friends, just insecure people just in other areas where I just sometimes apparently I have the skill to make people feel insecure, whether they have more than me, less than me, or to compare what we even had. I thought we was cool. If we know each other, why are we even worried about this stuff? And if we don't know each other, you need to worship, work on you. We're not the same person. Like, it's not even that deep. I don't lay up treasures on this earth for myself. And if I do, they're blessings from God, but they'll all be there. They won't last. None of this will last. So God has delivered me from homosexual, any type of homosexuality, uh, one live and thinking, because that's not my portion. And that's not his, that's not of his kingdom. That's not of his, that's, that's, there's no fruit that comes from that, that bears fruit in his kingdom. So the world's pressing these things, the world's encouraging these things, and I saw no issues with it. I didn't start smoking until I graduated high school, but when I did, like, it was on and popping. Um, not consistently. I probably started smoking consistently, like, in my mid-20s, early, mm, 23, 22, and it went on consistently from there, but was able to stop, like, cold turkey when I'm like... It was, it's about taking on God's will and not your will. The things of the world, you're going to have to spend this time being delivered and healing from the, the, what the world has put upon you. So the world tried to tell me my identity, that I don't have a spirit of, that I do have a spirit of fear, that I don't have any power, that I don't have a love, that I don't have sound mind. And God let me know, like, at this in his word, his word will never return to him void. And I've been seeing that play out because there are things in the, the word that are playing out in the day, like today, that if you have the spiritual eyes and ears to see, you'll see this book's supposed to be so old and mean nothing, but you'll see the truth of it. The answers in it is, <laughs> like I said, when I saw my life reflected in Romans 7, it's, it's there. The answers are there, but the, the inheritance is also being able to take what you know there and spread it to some, your own seed. I learned this and I'm going to tell, I'm going to plant this in your heart. So it's rooted in your heart. So I can keep you from going through these things, but these trials, because of who I've called you to be, maybe that man that was born blind. Cause at one point I was like, God, why would kids have to go through this? Why would it have to be this and that? You know, you have to, this stuff is so hard to be away from and be free from, but born blind is something people don't want to be. But imagine the glory of God where that ain't your portion and you understand that's not your portion. And I'm just like, people want to compare and be like, this ain't that. This is what you can't take. What really brings me joy is going to always bring me joy. And that's just, that's from God. <laughs> that's from God. The time spent on earth is not as long as in heaven. And heaven is real. God is real. His power and his glory is real. And through all that, through the Son, Jesus Christ is real. And hell is real. It's a spiritual war. We do not battle against flesh and blood, but wickedness in high places. Those who are partnered with the wickedness in high places that are of want greed and the power over the world, they are pushing these things, especially in Babylon. I want to introduce you to things of the flesh. I want to introduce you to things that are confusing. The flesh will be sinful on its own. We don't need no, you have to learn to conquer the flesh. That's what you're going to need to do anyway. So just having no knowledge of all of this and on top of generational curses that you have to break. Paul had to break, the, had to be set free from the, the curse of being a Pharisee because his family was a Pharisee. That's what I'm saying. That's why I spoke on Paul. And he wrote a portion of the Bible. So again, back to the, so a big portion of the Bible. So back to the hypocrisy of anybody preaching the word. They're preaching the words of God from the man that was actually killing Christians. So imagine being alive and went in that time and seeing Paul being a disciple of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the flesh and knowing that Paul killed somebody you knew, some woman you knew, some man you knew, some child you knew, threw them in prison. And you see him, you probably feel some kind of way. But that's one of the tests that you have to come past when it comes to being able to forgive and have a heart that is of God. And some people want to claim that, but they ain't really found that place. And it's dangerous when you get to that place and you consider yourself a leader and pass this out to his God's sheep as if it is a portion that is supposed to be discern people of the world god will judge them that's why i can't feel no kind of way about anybody in the world that's trying to come against me god already let me know um what is this because i don't want to make this too long matthews 5 10 through 12 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven 
Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. First Peter 3 and 17. For it is better to suffer for, good, for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil than for doing evil. 1 Peter 3 and 14, but if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. They persecuted Paul after, you know, Paul became, Saul became Paul. They persecuted, like I said, Stephen, like everybody has it. So I'm not, this is something that is possible. And it will happen when you come in, in Jesus' name. When you see the, the, the what the, the darkness want to hate about you, the darkness don't like the light. And it's not a comparison game. What your portion is can't be my portion. My portion is always going to come from God. So those trying to tell you that you can't be healed from these things, you can't be healed from same-sex living, masturbation, um, anger, rage. Because I could say at points it felt like rage where it was just like it don't matter. Like anybody can get it. That's how I know that feeling. And it's, it's so... Yeah, I didn't actually have that space, though. So this is stuff of the world. You're going to have to take time and partner with God to get this stuff off of you, out of your heart, out of your mind. Find the portions that are in his word that are for all of us, as it says. And this is, like, again, a part of that hypocrisy, which nobody's perfect. But as a leader, you should be. These are things that if you were truly called and chose by God, you would be kind of solidified in the space to where you wouldn't have been sifted and fell short in these areas, causing discourse in the body of Christ and presenting, still presenting yourself as not a cancer of the body of Christ, because that's what these things are, they're doing to cause that discourse. Um, First Timothy two and three through four, uh, God, our savior, I'm paraphrasing, desi desires, God, our savior desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants to have it for everybody. That didn't say not some, but all. But it takes being committed to the Lord's will, truth, and faith. It takes being committed. So 2 Timothy 1 and 7 is your portion. It is your portion. You do not have a spirit of fear. You were not born with a spirit of fear, but of power, of, of, of love. And the sound mind, and if you don't want to accept these things as your portion, that's totally up to you. Nobody said it's going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it because it's the will of God for your life. And he knows the things to not get to give you a will of to not harm you, not for any evil. It's, it don't feel good. Look what they did to Jesus to give us access to the father. People that he was going to be doing this for that he had to go do this for people that knowing that they... I'm doing this for people that don't even know that I'm doing it for them. This, this is for Jesus, in a sense, um, to give them access to the Father so that they can still be on that day of the second coming and the, the second death of the Spirit. They don't have a second death. They have access to eternal life if they only overcome the world and seek the Father through me as I've sent to save and pour out his blood to be the perfect sacrifice. And allow the spirit of the world to be, of, of God, excuse me, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to be available to all of us. The glory of God to be made known in all of us and know that God is real. And you can still have the fruit of the land and the land of the living. You can still be alive and be blessed by God. And still, I can do that and still get to see my Savior at the end of the narrow path at the gate. Instead of going down the wide path where everybody going to hell or they want to be their own God and live in darkness, I can still see. And I'm not finna. Yeah, God already showed me how real he is. So, yeah, I'm going to just say, yeah, that's my that's 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 my testimony. Some people don't want healing to be my portion and healing. Like if you want to disrespect where you think I am healed or ain't it, that's. I see you. If you're in the world, you, I already know you walking in the world, so that's you're going to be judged by God. But if you're in the body of Christ doing that, God bless you. I'm going to remove myself, and you will be not, I'll let you, you'll be known for who, who you are and what you're doing. 
especially if you want to do it in front of my face. But if you're doing it behind closed doors, God knows the judges, the hearts of man and the minds and the motives. So people of people think they know my heart and my mind, but God knew my heart and my mind. Nobody knew what I've been through as a childhood and everything that formed the things in my heart and my mind. Does that mean I, I, I didn't experience like soul crushing things that I had to come through? It hurt knowing that I could be something I didn't feel like I was, ever was, or I could be these things. But God knew my heart. God knows my heart. God knows my thoughts. God knows the things to, to, to give me a purpose, to not to harm me. Does this process of being persecuted feel good? No, especially behind closed doors and people behind your back and people, God revealing things in your dreams and showing you people and breaking generational curses where generational curses is whoa that's a whole like whole another thing where if you break in the generational curse is because the generations could you don't know how far necessarily the curse goes back but when you could say some some things that could be like generationally cursed or you know that's just how we is or you know I, we got that spirit of where people some i've heard somebody say you know where you know we some drinkers around here and they call it spirits for a reason and they can't really, they can't consistently get along with each other. They can get drunk and then they constantly into it, even when they're not, you know, sober or when they are sober. So it's just issues that be unnecessary to life that God ain't given us to be our portion. And we take that on and be proud of it. Culturally, they want you to celebrate it. The darkness pushed it heavily at one point. Yeah, it was on every liquor store on every corner. And there was a purpose in that. I'm trying to add to your generational curse. You have to be strong enough to take on the will of God and say, that's my portion. I have a, a spirit that is not of fear, but of power, of, of, of love, of a sound mind. Like, that's my portion. And healing is, has been my portion. Deliverance has been my portion. Peace has been my portion. And that's why ain't nobody taking that from me. All that being said, I want you to know, yeah, like the masturbation thing, I want to touch base on that. Just not touching yourself, spending time by yourself in the wilderness. Satan going to test you. Satan came to test Jesus with the word of God when he was in his wilderness season. These things will happen, um, but you're strong enough. And there are people out there that are support systems that truly have the hearts and are partnered with God in a way that brings his light to this world. They're not lukewarm about it and they're not here to judge you about it because they understand the word of God in this process ain't necessarily easy for everybody. So with all that being said, man, this is my testimony. I've been brand new for God and I'm going to stay brand new for God. And ain't no, I don't, my joy ain't for the world uh, to try to take from me because the world didn't give it, didn't, didn't give it to me. So uh, most of the times if you're triggering somebody and you didn't do nothing to them and you know what it is, um, it's the demons in them and, the truth will always be the truth, whether we like it or not. But God is the ultimate truth. And that's where he wants you to be with him. And to overcome the world is the goal to protect your heart, to guard your heart, to guard your mind and release yourself from all the things of the world that try to tell you who you are in God's eyes and who you're not. And um, be strengthened in him wherever you're weak. Call him in prayer. You can't please God without faith. And those who worship God will worship him in spirit and truth through the ways of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, with all that being said, man, I love you. I love you. <laughs> God is amazing. I'm thankful to know him. I'm so thankful just to know him. Um, and you hope to be a joint heir, a co-heir to be, you hope for his righteousness that when he, when you pray that he hears your words, he hears your call. He makes a way he goes before you to in that path that you hear from him. Um, he loves you. As it said, um, he wants this for all men, not some men. So if you have breath in your body, if you have breath in your body, if you're willing to pick up your cross and be true about it, you can eat the land of the living, the fruit of the land of the living, and the, and the fruit of the land in the of the living while you're still living. And um, it ain't even just about that. It should be you should be grateful just to know him. And when you seek his kingdom and his righteousness and hope and hope for it all the things of heaven will be added unto you. And that's the beauty. Um, knowing that it's, he only uh, reprimands 
those he loves and he loves you. Life ain't gonna be easy. The man that was born blind, like I said, I've been through so much. People, other might have been through worse or things that affected them mental uh, in, a, in a deeper level, but coming back to God and like that's knowing that's the word, that's what he said is my portion, that's my portion. Like that's the truth, that's, that's, what, that's what you keep here. That's what you keep here. And you don't let nobody take that from you. I mean, you stand 10 toes on that and call on him whenever you need to. So in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, go with love. I pray the complete shalom over your life and whatever healing and whatever you need it and whatever portion. Be strong. Keep going. I'm out.